through the study of rhythm, we can see the, and hear the continuity of music throughout the Levant, things that are common to the entire region, especially when we discuss uh, urban rhythm or what we sometimes would call classic rhythms. And they are composed of a downbeat and an upbeat, which we would call in Arabic dum and tek. And then when you start to get into the folkloric rhythms and um, the traditional regional rhythms, you start to see the differences and hear the differences in that it's not totally homogenous, but that each uh, smaller group of people have a character. And uh, may I play, please? Please. Thank you. <laughs> so what we'd like to say is, for example, we can take the very first rhythm of the piece that we played today uh, at the beginning, the Semai. And this has uh, Turkish origins, but it's now uh, uh, claimed all over the Arab world and the Levant, and it's used very universally. And with the dooms and texts, I would count it as 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But by itself, that's just the skeleton. We don't have any of the feeling or the imagination or the travel of it until we decorate. And this is the beauty of our music, is all of these small details between each. And that's what starts to give the character and that each bar is different. And this is how we enjoy the music even more. So we can take all of these rhythms and we can find the classic, quote unquote, or the urban version, and then see how it's personified into the regions. So for example, I'll take this one, Wahdi. So I'm here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two, three, four. So we call this a Wahda by itself, with the embellishment. This is what makes it beautiful. Otherwise, it's just a plain t-shirt. This is with your logo and your decoration and cut up and cigarette burns and all the above. <laughs> but then we start to get into the regional versions of Wahda. So the first thing we would do is we would speed it up. So for folkloric music, it's always tied to some kind of activity, a dance, a gathering. So here's the Wahda, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, sped up. And now I would play it like you would hear in Lebanon or Syria with this decoration. You start to call that left, right? And so if you know the Dubki line dance, which is popular over there, you know that people take step, right, step, right, lift, stomp, step, right, step, right, lift, stomp. So I've taken the rhythm, play two bars, and then accent the feet. Now if I go to Alexandria, Egypt, I would add this decoration. So here's the skeleton by itself. But in Alexandria, with the different dances, the Hagalla, Malaya Lafa, I would add the double decoration. You hear this? And so this wouldn't work with Dubki, would make them all nervous. So I would just play like this. And then if I wanted to do the entire phrase of music, I would play three of them and then accent at the end. So you hear that? And this is our music. Same root is we can play the shobi, which comes from Iraq, this long line dance. So we add the three dooms in the beginning. But still the same skeleton of left. So this is the commonality around the region. We have another group, Maksum. Okay? So the urban version, which we would hear in all the different cities. Here's a skeleton. By itself, not much of anything, like a typewriter we're playing music. Well, other parts of it. I don't want to just show off on this play, okay? <laughs> right, thank you. Thank you. Of course, let's go back to Dubki from uh, Lebanon in Syria. So again, I'm going to trace the steps. Forward, back, forward, back, stomp, stomp. So it's still this rhythm, the maksum rhythm, but tracing the steps. Forward, back, forward, for example, exactly like. Now for Egypt, we have the same rhythm, but it's played very quickly. We call this felahi, so farmer style. 
We don't want to be out there in the fields forever, so we speed it up. And finish quickly. And here would be our last major group, which is the Masmudi group. So we would play this low. And this is our skeleton. One, two, and five. The slower it is, the more you decorate. You can even decorate with the extra dooms. But when you play it faster, we have the small masmudi, which you hear in our regional folk music all the time. Some people would call it melody. Can you hear? You start to feel it, right? I can tell all of you are moving a little bit, clapping, even though I'm blinded. Don't resist. And let's finish, of course, with Turkey. And the beautiful thing that I saw in Turkey is that the audience can clap these odd rhythms, all right? And they're not thinking of it as an academic thing, but they feel it. So, for example, one of the rhythms in, in Turkey would be the seven beats. So rather than think of it as an odd number, it's three pulses, and the third one is longer, all right? So... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you'd hear everybody there coming. And you would feel encouraged. And then the final one, nine beats. Do you think they know how to clap? I mean, like we can do this in 20 seconds, right? Can you clap four times, but the fourth one is a little bit longer? Call this karshlama. A little faster on the last one. Not all the time fast, just the last one. Keep going, everyone. Two more times. Last time. Thank you, everybody. This hey. is our, these are our rhythms. Thank you very much. Shukran. Shukran. Shukran.